hello students uh, this video is about another optical instrument that is compound microscope previously we have studied about simple microscope which only consist of a single convex lens of short focal length but now in compound microscope there will be two convex lenses of short focal length and these are arranged coaxially at the ends of a of actually two metal sliding tubes so basically we have two convex lenses of short focal length and the distance between these lenses can be adjusted so as to get the magnified image of tiny objects and the magnifying power or the quality of this compound microscope is such that it can produce a magnification of the order of 1000 that means it can magnify the image as compared to the size of the object of about 1000 times that what that's what it means so compound microscope is an optical device or an instrument which is used to see magnified images of tiny objects if we talk about its construction so it consists of two convex lenses in simple microscope there was only single convex lens but now in compound it is two convex lenses of short focal length And these are arranged coaxially at the ends of two sliding metal tubes. Now, these sliding metal tubes are used to adjust the distance between the two lenses and out of these two lenses one is called objective while the other one is called eyepiece so first lens is called objective objective is a convex lens of very short focal length and small aperture in comparison to the eyepiece so aperture of this lens is comparatively small in comparison to the eyepiece and it is positioned near the object that's why it is called as objective okay so objective is a convex lens of very short focal length and since it is objective so we denote its focal length by f not or f o so it depends the focal it shows the focal length of objective and it has small aperture and the, and the position of this objective is near the object which has to be magnified so the position of it is near the object that has to be magnified this is called objective now the second lens is the eyepiece this one is comparatively bigger than that of the objective and is placed towards the observer's eye that's why we call it as eyepiece so it is again a convex lens it has short focal length but its focal length is comparatively larger than that of the objective so a convex lens of comparatively comparatively larger focal length and since it is an IP so we denote its focal length by F and the letter E E is for eyepiece F E and larger aperture this larger focal length and larger aperture we are writing in comparison to the objective so larger aperture 
then the objective so we can write the condition is f e is greater than f o and it is positioned near the i objective is position near the object that's why it is called objective and eyepiece is position near the eye of the observer that's why it is called an eyepiece so this is the construction and there is a distance between these two lenses which we can vary by using these two sliding metal tubes or we call it as rec and pinion arrangement so that that distance is responsible for the image formation ki hame wo image jo ban raha hai wo kis position pe chahiye so we arrange or we change that distance for the required image now there are two cases when we study about its working so in working there are two cases first case is when we arrange our setup such that the final image is formed at least distance of distinct vision so in working we have two cases out of which the first case is when final image is formed at least distance of distinct vision means capital d when final image is at is formed at d this is the first case yes so this is a diagram for the case now here we have the object ab of height h the ray that is passing parallel to the principal axis it will go from the focus of the objective and the ray that is passing from the optical center will go in the same direction and deviate it and these two rays intersect each other at some point where we get the image because of this objective only till now there is no role of this eyepiece and the magnification that we get here is because of the objective only now this image that we get from objective which is slightly magnified it act as an object for eyepiece and the rays that are coming from this object a dash b dash which act as object for the eyepiece will undergo refraction via eyepiece and then the rays that are coming out or emerging out from the eyepiece that goes to the observer's eyes and the observer observe these light rays that's why these light rays actually appear to the observer to be coming from this point right let it name as a double dash and b double dash so these rays that observer is viewing are appear to be coming from or are appear to converge to this point a double dash and at this position we get the virtual image or the final image from this convex lens or eyepiece so first magnification we get when we get the image a dash b dash of ab second magnification we get uh, for the image a double dash b double dash from the convex lens near the eye that is eyepiece so total magnification of this compound microscope is actually equal to the product of these two individual magnifications means magnification of objective into magnification of eyepiece will give us the total magnification of this compound microscope so now we are going to find this magnification so for magnifying power we know the relation or the definition of magnifying power is that it is defined as the ratio of angle subtended at the eye by the final image to the angle subtended at the eye by the object when both are at least distance of distinct vision that means the magnifying power m is equal to the angle that is subtended by the final image in the situation when that final image is formed at least distance of distinct vision so this final image is forming at d at least distance of distinct vision and the angle that it make at this convex lens eyepiece is beta now since eyepiece is very close to eye so the angle that is formed at eyepiece we take it equal to the angle formed at the observer's eye means the angle that we get at eyepiece will be same as that the angle that we get at observer's eye so the image the final image 
which is forming at least distance of distinct vision make an angle of beta right make an angle of beta and we have to take its ratio with the angle subtended by the object when it is placed at d so both has to be placed at d now object is not at d so we have to make a separate diagram for this here we have made it so if we consider that object is at point d this is the height of the object then it makes an angle alpha so the ratio will be beta upon alpha or we can say that m is equal to angle subtended by image at i upon angle subtended by object at i but in both cases the image should be at d and object should be at also d so this is the definition for magnifying power now our task is to find beta and alpha so from this diagram since we know that the angles are small then we can write beta is equal to 10 beta and alpha is equal to 10 alpha so we are going to find the values of tangents of these angles right so what we are going to do this magnifying power m is equal to beta upon alpha which is approximately is equal to 10 beta upon 10 alpha so we are going to take m is equal to 10 beta upon 10 alpha now our task is to find the value of 10 beta and 10 alpha from the diagram so let's move to the diagram from this diagram if we see for beta 10 beta will be equal to in the triangle a dash b dash e in this triangle we have to find tangent of this angle beta and the distance this will be object distance for eyepiece means this this a dash b dash is acting as the object of eyepiece so it is known as ue now in this triangle tangent of beta will be perpendicular upon base that means h dash upon ue so we have tangent of beta is equal to h dash upon u after 10 beta 10 alpha can be easily calculated from the triangle a b and this point i or e so this ang this angle or the tangent of the angle alpha from this triangle will be perpendicular upon base that is h upon d so we have 10 beta is equal to h dash upon ue and 10 alpha will be h upon d now we are going to substitute these values to the formula of magnifying power that means m will be h dash upon ue upon h upon d now we know that the distance ue is the distance of image a dash b dash of objective and it works as the object of eyepiece okay so now we can rearrange this then we get h dash upon h into d upon ue and if you see this h dash upon h and d upon ue are the individual magnifying power of these lenses so we have the object of image of height h and we get an image from it of height h dash and this is done by the objective okay so magnifying power of objective is the h dash upon h so this is the magnifying power of objective now we in case of simple microscope we have studied that magnifying power of simple microscope is equal to d upon ue means if we consider a single lens that is eyepiece then it has object at ue and the image it is forming at d or at least distance of distinct vision which is the final image we are getting from this microscope so this is done by eyepiece that's why the magnification of eyepiece is d upon ue so this is the individual magnification of eyepiece and we take the product of these two we get magnifying power of compound microscope okay so m o is the magnifying power of objective which is equal to h dash upon h and it is also equal to v naught upon u naught and m e is the magnifying power of eyepiece which is equal to d upon u e also it is equal to d into 1 upon u e or we can write it as 
1 plus d upon Fe. If we solve it from the Lenz formula, we get 1 plus d upon Fe. Hence, we can also write m as in terms of these distances v naught upon u naught in place of m o into 1 plus d upon f e in place of m e. So, this is the magnifying power of compound microscope for first case when the final image is formed at least distance of distinct vision. Now, there are two more conditions that we can apply here. Condition number one. Uh, that the object we have means AB which is placed close to the focus of the objective. We have placed the object AB that is our object near to the focus F0 of that objective lens. That is why the object distance that we are having U0 will be approximately equal to F0 and since we are measuring this distance towards left and light is traveling towards right means we are considering sign convention here so we can write it as u naught approximately is equal to minus f naught this is the first condition along with this the second condition is since the image a dash b dash is formed close to the eye lens the image we have a dash b dash that is forming this image a dash b dash is formed close to the eye lens whose focal length is short the focal length of this lens is short therefore we can write the image distance of this objective means the distance from objective to this image a dash b dash is approximately equal to the length of the tube only because it is forming near this lens and this lens is at the other end of the tube means in dono ke beech ka jo total distance hai, that is capital L which is the length of the sliding tube and if this image is forming near the eyepiece in that case we can say the distance v naught is approximately is equal to the total length of the tube. So, this is the second condition that we are applying that v naught is approximately is equal to capital L which is the length of the microscope tube. Okay. Now, we can substitute these values in the upper formula, then we get m is equal to v naught, instead of v naught we are going to get l. Now, l are taking, taken in positive direction because we are um, calculating or observing l in a direction towards right which is same as that of the direction of light ray. So, m is equal to l upon f naught in negative. 1 plus d upon f e or we can write it as minus l upon f naught 1 plus d upon f e. So, for the final image at least distance of distinct vision this is the required magnification we will be getting ok. This is case 1 for the compound microscope. Now, the case 2 is when final image is formed at infinity. So, for that we again form a diagram. So, second case is when the final image formed by the compound microscope is at infinity. For it, we have the diagram here. So, this is the objective, smaller one is the objective and larger one, the uh, lens with larger aperture is eyepiece. The rays are coming from the object AB and after refracting from the objective, they are meeting at this point and where we get the image because of this objective only. And this image act as an object for the eyepiece. So, this is the distance of image from objective and this is the distance of object from eyepiece because this a dash b dash is acting as an image for objective and it is acting as object for the eyepiece. Now, after converging or after refracting from this eyepiece, the rays are going parallel that means they will meet at infinity or appear to be coming from infinity that means the final image that we will get will be at infinity. So, this time the magnifying power of a compound microscope will be defined as the ratio of angle subtended at the eye by the final image which is formed at infinity to the angle subtended by the object. Now, the object here is AB. 
ओके सो मैग्नीफाइंग पार को हम कैसे डिफाइन करेंगे इन दिस केस इन दिस केस द मैग्नीफाइंग पार इज डिफाइंड एज द रेशियो ऑफ एंगल सबटेंडेड बाय द इमेज एट आई नाउ द इमेज शुड बी एट इंफिनिटी राइट दिस इमेज इज फॉर्म एट इंफिनिटी इमेज हेयर मीन्स द फाइनल इमेज दैट वी हैव लेट्स राइट हेयर द फाइनल इमेज एंड वी हैव टू टेक इट्स रेशियो विद द एंगल सबटेंडेड बाय द ऑब्जेक्ट एट अन एडेड आई मीन्स विदाउट यूजिंग एनी लेंस so this is the ratio m of the compound microscope in the case when final image is at infinity now uh, we can also define it as the product of individual lenses means mo and me the product of magnifying power of individual lenses also give the net magnification by this compound microscope so that will be easier to find in this case because if the image is at infinity we can't find the angle that image is forming at the eye that is not possible so for that we are going to use this relation to find the magnifying power so first i am talking about the magnifying power of objective mo so the magnification due to objective is the ratio of the height of that of image to the height of object now for this objective object is ab of height h and image is a dash b dash of height h dash so mo can be written as h dash upon h which is the ratio of height of image to that of height of object and uh, we have just do it in previous case that this is equal to v not upon u not and later on we prove it equal to minus l upon f not or l upon minus f not right so this is m not that is the magnifying power of objective now come to the i piece so for for the i piece we have already calculated that this magnifying power is equal to the value d upon fe because it is a convex lens only so for it the magnification or the magnifying power will be me which is equal to d upon fe and because of these two values the net magnification or the magnifying power of the final image the net magnifying power or the magnification of final image that we are forming at infinity is equal to mo into me which will be minus l upon fo into d upon fe so this is the required magnification of the image formed by compound microscope at infinity now the magnifying power of compound microscope is large when both fo and fe are small means this is inversely proportional to the focal length so if we are using the lenses of shorter focal length then we will be getting more magnification in comparison to those lenses which have more focal length okay so this was all about the compound microscope in next video we will be moving to telescopes for that stay tuned keep studying thank you